I'm not on my normal mic. I'm on this crappy little headset mic. Um, again, because I'm not um, at my office, so you got to deal with some things sometimes. I was just saying that we're going to go through um, this API page and going to be look. We're we're basically picking off, picking up where we left last time which is wait for exist API page. We were running through some tests on it. Um, basically that the page object with this table, you can get the params from it. Just this generic uh, params page object and this API page object. Actually, the API page object calls a new parameters page object, which does some stuff to it. So we had almost finished with, um, with what we had going. Uh, we had this expect going um, and I believe we had this working. And so now what I wanted to do was just keep going down this test. But first things first, I'm going to double check that all of these tests run. Go into that folder that we had going, uh, which was WebDriver IO tables, table. And then if I run an NPM test, it should start my test. Oh, we got some passing tests. Awesome. Okay, so it is passing. Uh, one thing I mentioned was this optional, seeing if the parameter is optional. So we could say it should have, it should state that MS and reverse are optional. That'd be kind of good. So get names text. So how would we want to do this type of test? We basically want to say maybe like get optional params. And this, we would probably expect this to return either the whole row or just the name. Let's do that, get optional param names. So I'm gonna come into here, we have get names text. We would want get optional param names. So get optional param names, we are going to basically do the same thing we did here, which is get the text from the names. Then, to do a map, like before, we could do like a filter. Let me see, this is going to get into some, some JavaScript stuff where we want to basically remove any options in the array that don't have optional in them. So there is a filter method. So that's what we'll do. And since this is running in Node, it definitely should have support for this. So I'll say names.filter. And then this is going to return a true or false. And then the other thing I need to do is after filtering out the names filter, then I'm going to say text instead of trimming it, which we'll want to do next. We'll do a return and basically return this map from before where we just trimmed out everything. Okay. Um, so filtered names, we just want to check to see if it contains optional. So I'll get rid of that and that. And then I also believe there's a new contains function in string methods. There's a contains function. Includes is what we want. Include search string position. So we're just going to check that it includes the word optional. The only downside of this is if one of our actions has the word optional in it. There's an option, there's not even an option. Yeah, so I'm not gonna be too worried about that. I'm just gonna check that the text includes optional. If it does, then it's gonna return true and it's going to keep that name in there. If not, it's going to return false and it's gonna drop that from the array. And the last thing, we're going to just remove the optional from the text and return that. So here, expect page params, get optional param names to deep equal milliseconds in reverse. And then I'll only run that test and let's try it out. It did not work. Oh, I wonder. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I filtered the names, but then I didn't use that value. So that's what I did wrong. That was pretty obvious. You think you do everything right. And then it's pretty apparent sometimes when you mess things up, it happens pretty quick. There we go, okay. So that is now passing. That's a simple little test. It just kind of shows how you can kind of work with this data to kind of add some pretty special little features. The next thing I want to do is get row and get column. Get row would actually be pretty easy. Uh, let's take a look at that. So get row. First, we would want to say, 
So we're going to do params uh, page.params dot get row and then we'll pass in the index we'll do zero indexing here to say we want to get the first index we could do one indexing but I think zero indexing is just pretty common and instead of just doing a, a full equals on that I'm going to do constant row is equal to parameters dot get row we'll log out row there and then we're going to expect row dot something I guess this would be an array of values to equal selector. So get row, we're going to get the index. Then from there, we're going to do this dot table. These are our parameters. Return this. Uh, not zero, index. Now that's going to return the element. And we don't want the element specifically. We want the um, prettier version of that. So we don't want to return that, but we're going to say constant row is equal to. And then from there, we want to get all the data inside of it. So we'll probably go back to this get text call because get names returns a list of elements. So we want to get the elements. So we're going to do return row dot elements and we'll get all the, the table header or table data. And then we're going to do get text on that. So this is going to return an array of content, of, of text, inside of each of these params type details. Get row, expect row zero to equal selector. We could do row to equal details. I think this is going to work. So it's going to return an array of these three values, these three items. And I'm going to log out row just in case um, it doesn't come back as what we were expecting. Ooh, that is a weird error. I didn't like that at all. We got some errors. We have, so this is what I was expecting to get. It looks like it's getting all the, the table data kind of stuff. So what's going on? Param type detail selector. Oh, it, so this got all the elements on the page like all of these. So for some reason, like I should have gotten row. Oh, okay, so row comes from this dot get params. That is all of the table elements on the page. That's really strange. It's almost like it resets entirely and just treats this as the body of the page. And I think I'm gonna move that down here to rows, rows index. Let's see how that works. Let's do some logging rows and rows index. I guess I could do a browser debug to get into here, but it runs pretty fast. Okay, so undefined from that. Oh, I need the value, I think. It is limited to just those three table rows now, so that's good. So I wonder if I would need to do dot value dot index in order to select into the value and then get the index from there. What I'm wondering is, is if WebDriver IO is going to know what to do with this, or if I need to wrap that in like parentheses, kind of like that. Otherwise I could do get params.element and then in there I would throw, okay. So I'm gonna use a little bit of new syntax here. It's a JavaScript template strings to pass in the index value into the nth child call. So I didn't even want to give uh, WebDriver IO the benefit of the doubt. Let's try that. Rose is not defined. Pfft, dumb. <laughs> I renamed it. You know, I type out this browser.debug command so much, I should, I should make a hotkey for it. I keep meaning to, and then I keep forgetting. So. Normally I've got this little handy function that will say if I specify debug equals true, like here, it'll change the timeout to be longer than, what, 30 seconds, but I don't have it set up and I don't really want to set it up right this second. It's not too much, but I'm just going to up this timeout so that I can take a little bit longer. The big issue is that I can't call this because I'm not inside of uh, this API 
context. I'm kind of outside of that. But I can um, just kind of copy and paste this, that value into uh, my browser debug. What if I do rows, rows equal to rows dot element. Let's see what that does. Still can't find the element. So I'm gonna come into here. Oh, this top table that elements. Oh man. So now I'm gonna have to copy this, put together like this super long selector. So const table is equal to. So I do have my table, so I can say table. That'll get my three rows like before, and then I can say basically that same thing, and then element, and I'll pass in zero. No such child. Is it just nth child? Oh no, I did not like that. Oh, you know what? Nth child is one based. Yeah, that's what's going on. So this did work. So I'm gonna undo that. It's just this needs to be index plus one. Or I could just change that to be one. Yeah, I, I'm gonna change it this in this area so it's a little bit more straightforward. I don't wanna be doing magic behind the scenes. If somebody needs to figure that out, they can just go straight to this get row and see, okay, it gets passed into nth child and, and go from there. So there, I'll just keep chaining on to that. And then this is the same issue. And when I get to elements from here, what if I just do elements? How many elements do I have? I have all the elements. Row equals, so I've got my row, so now I can do row.elements td. And that still returns all of those elements. What if I just run get text on that row? Oh, whew. yeah, that's not what I wanted. So what's row? I want ID. Oh, my selector. You see how the selector here is just nth child? That's just getting like the first element on the page. So when I go from get params to element, it doesn't seem to like that. But even here, that selector, how about table.elements.elements? TD, what's that do? That grabs all the data elements on the page. This isn't working the way that I thought it would work as far as being more specific and, and chaining those selectors together. I think you can only go like one deep on your chain. It's probably how I'm messing up is that you can only go one deep on this chain and so I'm gonna have to come up with a better option. So rather than trying to tie that in, I think I'm gonna have to get, I'm gonna get the rows I'll go back to the way that I was doing it before. And then I'm going to get the row element, rows.value. Rows and then here I'll pass in that index. Yeah, I guess I gotta change that back to zero because we're not using nth child anymore. Rows.value. And so this is going to be that. Let's see if I can get the value and then zero. Okay, so that gets that first option, and that's what I've got going here, rows.value.that. And then can I get the text from there is the question. It does. It grabs me the text, but it's all one, one thing. So if I want to do that a little bit more clear, so instead of that, I'm going to say row is equal to table elements, and I'm going to say row.getText. Okay, and then how about row.elements? TD? Let's see, what does that do? Yeah, that gives us our three. WebDriver IO, I should have just trusted it from the very beginning. It's smart enough to know that even though this all this is is a JSON object, it treats that as if it's its own element because I could just do straight that without having to define it as an element, without having to wrap it in that, that element. So I'm gonna say row.elements td, and that's going to give me dot get text my array. Yeah, that I'm looking for. Perfect. Yeah, like that. Okay, control C to exit out of browser debug. It'll go back here and then let's run this test for sure. I can get rid of debug true because it doesn't even do anything. There we go. Great, okay, so that works. Let's just look at that real quick again. We're getting the parameters. So this gets us our three table rows. Then we get the first row based off of the index that gets passed in. And then from there, we call elements to get the three TD elements and call get text on each of those elements. So that's going to return an array of the response of each of those elements. Um, we could just call straight get text like that, but that's not going to return an array. It's going to return 
a single item, a single bit of text. Um, yeah, that's that one. Let's try get column, because that one's going to be a bit more complicated. And I guess, you know, that would be the same thing as get params. This table element, table row, td, oh, get names. So here, instead of get names, we could just do get column. So this should really be named get row text, if I wanted to name it something that's a little bit more consistent. So let's do get column text of the second column. So we'll use one because that's how it is. Should list parameter types. So we'll get the column text of the second column. To deep equals string number boolean. String. Okay, I want to do get column text. And if I really wanted to do just get row, I would basically return just this, just those three elements. Or I could return just the row if I wanted to. That wouldn't be a terrible thing to throw out there. And even I could do that just as simple as get row and return that. And then for get row text, I say my row is equal to row. like that. And then I return that information. So in theory, that still works. Um, and I could do the same thing for get column. The only thing with get column is it's not going to be as easy as just saying get a table row because you're, you're going up and down. You're going vertically along the, the table, which doesn't quite match along with the HTML because the HTML reads param type detail selector string CSS selector. And instead, you want it to read string number Boolean. We're going to use this little CSS trick here. And I'll get rid of that because we don't need it um, to get the TD at a certain position. OK, so here, instead of get params, I want this dot get column. And I'll pass in the index. And that's going to be our column. And then um, this might be different. It might just be column dot get text because the column isn't going to be a single element, unlike the row that returned from get row, get row is a single element. Get column is going to be a set of elements, again, because you're going vertical instead of horizontal. Uh, columns, this dot get params, and I don't want this dot get params. I want this dot, basically this selector, table dot elements. Yeah, that's the selector I want. This dot table dot elements, and instead of first child here, we're going to do nth child. Ooh, and uh, since we're doing nth child, it's going to be a different indexing scheme. So if I put index on here, and then I pass in get column text of one, it's actually going to pick the first column instead of the second column. So now I have to make a decision on my interface whether I want this index to be different from this index. Either way, I'm going to have to modify the index that gets passed in. That's messy. Um, I'm going to ignore that bit for now. OK, almost done here. I think I'm just going to do get column. And I'll skip get param description because it's pretty much the same thing as get names text. It's all kind of the same idea. Um, and then I think this will wrap up this idea of testing tables and how you can get columns. and then. You can expand this out to get a specific item. So you could say get TD at and then get like the X coordinate and the Y coordinate and get that specific one. And I should be able to just return that. I don't have much hope that this is actually going to work. Uh, we do have the column working. So what do we need to do? Nth child index was should be two. And then I will just log that out. I don't know why, because it'll be logged out anyway. Let's try that. There, it worked. On the whole suite of tests, just to make sure it's all still working, because I did make some updates there um, to some other things. Get my fingers crossed that I didn't break anything too badly. OK, there you go. Uh, seven passing tests. And now with uh, this API page, I could easily come in and create a new um, definition for instead of wait for exist, I could do like add value and then say uh, add value, let's see, utility. And I don't think it's a utility, it's an action. So new add value, the add value page. 
and then uh, should load the page, get URL to contain add value, and then I'll expect it to have a params. The parameter length will be two, and then should have the right selector. So it'll just be selector and values. And now if I do npm test and I'll say just run the test spec, test equals add value.js. I uh, hope it works because uh, I threw that together really quick. Oh, huh. um, yeah, but that's that's uh, that's how easy it can be to add a new test now that we have our API page and our params page object. That's that. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, I'll run this entire thing just to get to, and it'll run in parallel, so it should run pretty fast. You should see two uh, screens pop up, two two browser windows pop up. There's one. Let's see if I can get another one going. Yeah, it's behind it. So those two are running in parallel. Testing the page, and we've got our little test passing. Oh, another fail. Oh, that's just a weird, weird error that sometimes happens. I don't know why, maybe because I touched it or something. I'm, I'm just gonna ignore it. Yeah, I'll get this saved and uploaded to my WebDriver.io table repo. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next week.